put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Hunger Games Mood Review Set in either an alternate reality or a maybe not too distant future, this has the world divided into districts, 12 districts and the capital. And the capital is where the rich upper class, the ones in power, reside. And each year, once a year, the 12 districts each have to offer up two youngsters between, I believe, 12 to 18 or something like that, chosen at random through a lottery to fight to the death, meaning 24 people put together and only one is to come out alive. This is known as the Hunger Games. I'm not sure how much else I really should give away other than that we follow Katniss Everdeen who volunteers for, you know, as a so-called tribute in order to save her sister. That's really not a spoiler. It happens very early on, and the trailers have given it away quite nicely, so, yeah. And, yeah. Now, I... Sh this is one of those rare occasions where I can actually compare this to the source material. I did not read the book, but I did listen to the, you know, audiobook version of it. And I did so quite recently, so it's mostly fresh in my mind. This is a great adaptation. It captures almost everything from the book. Obviously, some things have been excised. That is necessary. I, the audiobook reading I listened to lasted for nearly 11 hours. This movie is roughly two hours. Obviously stuff is gonna go. Now, there are as well some decisions, some, some changes made. Not all of them entirely necessary, I would say, and one of them does leave me a bit flabbergasted, but I don't know. Anyway, for most of them, they are wise changes. With something being adapted from, you know, book to film, you know, in a book you can have these long stretches of just description and just reflection on things. And this book is written in the first person, so everything is from Katniss's perspective. In a film, you know, basically either you, you know, broaden it out and maybe add, you know, give some of these reflections and explanations to other characters, or you have, you know, excuse me, inner monologues as, you know, you hear Katniss's, you know, thoughts. In this, they give them to other characters, and that tends to work out quite well. Now, briefly more on the adaptation, and then I will get to what the movie is actually, you know, like its separate qualities for those of you who have not actually read the book, or maybe just don't care that much about, you know, because it is a film you can watch without, you know, I went to it with a friend who has not read the book at all, and he didn't have any problems following it, and he enjoyed it, it seemed as much as I did. Now, the 
Yes, the, the characters that, you know, th this is spoiler free for those who haven't read the book. But those who have, yeah, you'll get what I'm saying here. The characters come across as they should. You know, Cato is vicious. Caesar, you'll love him from the moment you see him. Cinna, you get this real sense of, you know, empathy and sort of, you know, and, and at the same time this sort of eccentric nature. A little bit, you know. Actually, the, the capital people, their appearances with makeup, color choices, clothes, border on grotesque. You know, I overheard some people talking about it after we watched it. They were comparing the their appearances to something from, you know, the Alice in Wonderland movie. And I can sort of see it, especially like the Mad Hatter. I think that's maybe the, what the, uh, yeah, what their thoughts were led to. And I can see why. But yeah, you know, the characters really come across as the, and also, when you when you've read the book when you when you know what's going to happen and you're watching this you know you will see some of the people that you you know you already sort of know well you know i knew from the trailers and such what peta looked like for example now someone watching this for the first time they're not you know necessarily going to know what's yeah but you know you you sort of notice them and with several of these, and so when they actually matter in the film, they didn't just come out of nowhere, you know, it's, they, they were already there, although you might not have noticed them if you weren't looking for them. And also important, and also something that sometimes gets messed up when a book gets adapted into a film, every character here matters. You know, some of the ones that they cut, you can kind of see why, even though in the book they might have been good characters, some have to go. And I don't think that the overall thematic, for example, is really lost. Yeah. Now, yeah, for, for those of you who are just complete purists about the book, I will start the spoiler-ridden video with, you know, stuff I can recollect from, you know, how it is in the film as to how it is in the book and, you know, try to give you an indication of if it'll, you know, live up to your expectations. Because I can totally understand. You know, I realize that most people have huge expectations, especially those who've read the book. Now... Yeah, the, the characters all have something to do and they actually matter, you know? No one is included from the book just because they were in the book and people expect them to also be in the movie, even though their significant impact was cut. Anyway, this is, an again, a great film. It's quite intense especially once the Hunger Games themselves begin. And the film does something extremely clever, as the book itself did. About half of it passes before the Hunger Games themselves begin. There is massive build-up towards this struggle, this contest. And so you get... You, you get to know the characters participate, or at least the, the ones you're supposed to know, really. And you get, you know, you get to like them, you get to care about what could happen to them. And it has a much greater impact when the fighting starts. Because you're really worried, you know. And just in the moments leading up to the Hunger Games beginning, Massive build-up. Just, you know, incredible. And it really works. It's a very well-filmed movie. It, you know, there are sequences that are incredibly effective. And it, yeah, they're just, they're 
directed exactly as they should be. I really don't want to give too much away, but there is this sequence where Katniss has to stand in front of an audience and she is not used to all this attention, especially so much positive attention. And we truly feel her dread at having to face all these people and just how anxious she is about that. And it's done entirely through camera work, a little bit of editing, and just, yeah, it's excellent. Now, with that said about the camera work, I should maybe at this point add, I would classify this film as either a thriller drama or perhaps actually a drama thriller. An action film? Not that great of one, if, you know, if we're going by that. Which is not to say, and I think it's important to make that distinction, a thriller can be very exciting, but you maybe don't watch it so much for well-choreographed action where you can really you know, tell what's going on and you have this sort of mano a mano kind of fight. Thriller as I see it is more that our hero is being chased or out overpowered and they have to make it. You know, action, you can maybe more have, you know, equally matched opponents. Now, yes, this does have action, but it's filmed far too close and with far too much shaky cam. I can understand the appeal of shaky cam, and sometimes it's great. But what it's great for is making things disorienting. Saving Private Ryan, those battle scenes, you know, the, the, when they get to the shore and get off the boats and all that, that's supposed to be, you know, chaotic. Why? Because there's a million things going on at once. In this, we literally have shaky cam in a scene where two characters are, you know, rolling around, you know, wrestling for control of the situation. That's not, you know, that chaotic and impossible of a situation to, you know, follow. It should be intense. It shouldn't be disorienting. Now, that is really one of the only negatives to say about this film. The editing is also great. The film does a, you know, actually a few of the changes from the book, I think, make it better or at least work better in the film. Work better in my opinion. We get more of a face for the capital people, I would say, that in than in the book, or at least, you know, yeah, that, that was my impression. I, I could really, I could tell who was behind the Hunger Games and who was, you know, making, you know, it's actually, you know, again, I ripped on Wes Bentley in my Ghost Rider 1 review, but as I said there, it's nothing against him personally. And in this, he proves why. He can really act. And... In something like this, he really is imposing, and he really is an unpleasant kind of, you know... They, they do it right in this. They give him the right role, and he really delivers. Him and Donald Sutherland are kind of the faces that, you know, you just, yeah, hate him. You know, every time you see him, you just know, oh, those are the bad guys. And that really works. You have a more sort of centralized villain kind of thing going on and this also this cuts back and this is this is a decision that I don't know if you know you can argue if it was for the better or not in the book it very much stays in you know with the contest once it starts in this it cuts back to sort of the control room and it cuts back to you know in the book Katniss imagines things you know, she she's like, ah, I, you know, probably this is because of this and this. Or right now, I'm sure in this or that district, this is going on. In the film, we actually see that. You know, it's not that, you know, and yeah, that makes sense to do. Now, the, the effects are great. It's, you know, it has a little bit of a futuristic thing going on, especially in the capital, of course. And 
what that really does, and does quite well, is create this dichotomy between the poorer districts, you know, Katniss is from District 12, the worst off district. So when she starts out, you know, she's literally, she's hunting to survive. And then a little later on, you know, when, when she gets to the capital, they're practically throwing food at her, you know, delicacies and just this, and it, yeah, you know, so you really see this sort of, yeah, huge contrast between the rich and the poor. The, the acting is phenomenal, you know, I, one could say that since Jennifer Lawrence is a young mystique, one has to wonder why she keeps disguising herself as, you know, a young, independent, tough woman, but she's really good at it. It's, it's a disguise she wears well, so I guess she should just stick with it. Seriously, big props to her acting chops. It, I did not mean for that to rhyme. She is excellent. She, you, you really believe her. I, yeah, I, I could really just list the, I, I don't think there was any, anyone who gave a bad performance. You know, I'm, I, I was impressed by Kravitz, actually. It's, you know, evidently he acts far better than that daughter of his who was in the, the X-Men First Class movie, because she was just <laughs> terrible. The sort of, I don't know, look and feel of the film is quite good. They're, you know... It's the the characters and the sort of subplots and stuff that goes on works out pretty well. Some of it is a bit less effective than in the book because of stuff that they just didn't include. And yeah, that you know that's where it actually you can sort of tell that this was cut down from. You know, I really can't dance around it too much more without just coming out and saying, and basically, yeah, I think everyone know, already knows it, there's a love triangle, there's a, you know, there's, there's a, yeah, and it works much better in the book. I don't, that I, I, I'm not sure they could have made it work much better than they did in the movie, but yeah, you can tell it's been cut down, you know. I don't know, we, we, maybe one could hope for like a, an extended edition or something, you know, c coming out on DVD or something. But otherwise, yeah. The ending is a bit... I don't know, it, it just, it comes off as different. I don't think it quite conveys the same thing as you know, was conveyed in the book. And I think we do lose something there. but. Yeah, on the whole, great film, you know. It's also a really well-paced film. I, I mentioned earlier, The Hunger Games themselves do not begin until about halfway through. That doesn't mean that we're bored before that, you know. We spend a little bit of time before the lottery sequence, you know, just getting to know, for example, Katniss, and immersing ourselves in her environment. We understand where she's coming from, literally. And then, you know, the, the drawing of it, and then we sort of, we spend a bit of time getting used to the idea of, you know, Katniss and this other person having to go to the Hunger Games together and sort of just trying to figure out, you know, is she at all able to do it? You know, sure, she's a hunter, but you know, that's one thing that I haven't actually, that I haven't already mentioned for those who haven't read the book, and again, this is not a spoiler, there are, you know, teenagers from the more well-off districts that are known as the, the careers, the career tributes, and they train for the Hunger Games, and then they volunteer, so they're like, they're there to kill. They're there to fight. They're there to win. And they're going to do everything they can to win. And it's a wonder if Katniss stands a chance against, you know, yeah, how is she going to compete with that? So, yeah, you know, so you spend some time just with that and, 
you know, yeah, stuff goes on before the Hunger Games begin, and this is crucial, this is never a boring film, you know. I knew everything that was going to happen, basically, you know, except for the fact that I hadn't actually seen it before, but it's an adaptation, and, you know, the audiobook was fresh in my mind, so there was not that much room for surprise other than how they adapted it. And I was immersed from start to finish, and it wasn't just in a sort of, you know, I want to see how they do this kind of thing, I was genuinely getting into the story again. I'm not sure there's much else to say. Yeah, I think that is it. So, yeah, again, great film and definitely worth watching and definitely worth watching in the theater because there are some sequences that really do deserve, you know, big screen and surround sound. One final thing, actually. I believe this was rated PG-13. They did an excellent job of getting in as much blood and violence as they could with that rating. When I heard the book, already knowing that the film was PG-13, with some of the scenes, I was thinking, they're not going to do this in PG-13. They, they would need an R. They did great on actually making it... Yeah, as, as bloody and as violent as it sort of could be and needed to be. You know, they, they chose the right moments for it to be bloody and violent. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.